lift it up, lift it up. Here's what we're going to do. Jimmy, they're going to be expecting you to take the last shot. We're going to use you as a decoy. Buddy, you get the ball, get the rail on the picket fence. He's going to take the last shot. All right, let's go. What's the matter with you guys? What's the matter with you? I'll make it. All right. Buddy, get the ball to Jimmy, top of the key. Must have just the floor. Let's go. Hey. Yeah, welcome to a thing, whatever. I don't know. I don't know even know I don't even know why we bother anymore. But the wind beneath my wings is here. Take it, Bobby. Hey, hey, for once I'm the enthusiastic one and Pat's the depressed one. We're switching up roles tonight. And speaking of a guy who loves some roles and butter cuz he's on a roll. He's our regular guest when I opened up the guest window again. His name was already in there cuz he was the last guest we had. You know him. You'd love him, ladies and gentlemen, the king of Harrisburg, Andrew Glessner. Boy, that was so thick with bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but you're you're not fat. I no, love no, rolls. No, no, it was supposed to I be like supposed to be like butter because he's on a roll, like that corny joke, uh, like he's doing great things. But I'm, we've all tasted. I'll eventually succumb to heart disease, much like butter. Andrew, it's really hard for me to switch things. I need oh. you to be quiet for one second because you're old news. And joining us tonight is new news, a new guest. Some call him the king of North Jersey, but I just learned he's from New York. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so thrilled to announce it's Anthony Quinn. Uh, uh, what spread is he? Is he margarine? Um, he's cinnamon butter. Um, Luciferian spread. <laughs> Wait, is he gay? No, not at all. <laughs> is he gay? Because well, he said cinnamon spread. Like, I that's said Luciferian gay. spread. No, you said that. He said cinnamon, I thought. <laughs> is he gay? <laughs> I was like, wait. I is rock. that all it takes? You got to like cinnamon a lot? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have you guys, have any of you guys heard Kyle Kinane's new special? Yes. He says that right at the beginning. He's like, looking for cinnamon. That's gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't see it. And that wasn't the reference. I mean, it was such a treat like cinnamon toast. You don't have that every day. And we don't get Anthony Quinn every day. That's right. Oh, that's usually right. You get Avery Quinn. It does look like we are different stages of a Bosley commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the before or way after? I can't. You're tell. the way after. You're you're like once you <laughs> get your life results. together. <laughs> yeah. I can swim with this. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're the clearly different jacked guy who's now with the hot babe. <laughs> I'm the loser. Oh, at thanks the beginning to Bosley. <laughs> Dude, people have always told me I have a good head for being bald, man. Yes, you do. I, me too, dude. So does Pat. Ever again, what were they saying? It's like, yeah. It's the biggest guy. You have small ears. You're lucky you have small ears. Stop looking at my fucking ears. Bobby, I, I would never do this. I, you might do a joke about if Andrew was the, the final results, what one of the side effects would be. Temporary blindness. Oh, no, it's permanent. <laughs> Permanent partial blind. <laughs> you get to become an X-Men. It's, it's worth it. Look at this be. hair. I was just at an open mic where one guy went up. He owns a Greek diner, okay? And then he oh. called everyone gay. Well, he's yeah. Greek. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up and I said, I was going to do time, but I have to do this now. <laughs> it's just like, you understand that you are why there is gay. Like, he's not a homophobe. He just wanted to have sex with everyone. <laughs> well, yeah. He kept yelling at what is one fatter comic. He kept going, I'm going to fuck you in your ass because you're so gay. And I'm like, I want you to understand why that doesn't <laughs> Was he pausing for a reaction afterwards to see what the guy was saying? Like, <laughs> well, I couldn't because the guy was just going, no. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> How are you guys? Um, now, Andrew was not the last guest we had on. His last guest we had on when you did Bells and Whistles, Bobby. That's yeah, what that's what I meant. So, but because yeah, he gets when we have Andrew on, we get whistles and bells. It was definitely Andrew that made me bring out the big tools. That's, Rape whistles, that's the guest. <laughs> I'm worthy of the pageantry. How does that would work? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the of the two guests. It was definitely for Glessner, not Big Shot Anthony Quinn. See, no one can tell when you're being an asshole or you're being nice. 
Uh, that's the I'll beauty take it of either me. Way, they man. both I'll think I'm giving way. them a compliment. Anthony thinks I was being sarcastic. Glessner thinks I was being genuine. It, it's no, a win-win. I, the thing is, I'll take a chance that you weren't. <laughs> and the audience knows the reality is my computer's <laughs> probably going to crash. And then we're going to go back to Zoom for two weeks. It has nothing to do with them. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You try. That's all. Yeah, that we're trying our best. It's like you got one free week trial to Blue Chew. <laughs> I, I'm finally doing it. And like, it runs out. You're like, well, I'm not paying for this. Fuck, we're back to the old way. I'm just crying. Yeah. One, time I was, like a uh, one time I was dating a girl, and we were having some Ooh. intimacy issues. I know. She was the worst. Um, we were having some intimacy issues, and I went on vacation for a week and, like, didn't jerk off for that week. And when I got back, I was, like, really wanted her badly. And she refused to believe I hadn't popped like a Viagra or a Blue Chew. <laughs> She's like, "You've never wanted me this bad in your life. What's what's up?" <laughs> what were you doing? Were you like stand? Mm. What were you doing? Where she just knew I want you. You didn't say those words, did you? I want it. Uh, I kind of like yeah, I kind of did. I kind of like came in the apartment and kissed her. And was like, "Oh, I need you so badly," or something along those lines. She was like, "Well, let me take a shower quick." And I was like, "No, you don't. Have, like, I need you. Like, you know, something." Let me like go that. Watch no, you don't have to take a shower. Yeah, like I was trying to be. <laughs> normally, I was like very like you take the lead here because I'm a feminist. <laughs> Continue. So it, she was surprised by me initiating as opposed to. Normally, I was the black chess pieces. I would move second in reaction to her moves. And you moved late? Or, like, not recognize she was moving, even. Or that we were playing a game. Who knew? I was very oblivious. I wasn't a great <laughs> chess player, but in this instance, I was the white pieces. I struck first. All right, cool. So our three <laughs> listeners have quit. Pat, what do you got? <laughs> I think so did I. Yeah, I know. We got deep in chess. I tried to, I tried to make it racist and fun. Nobody went with me. I, like, I didn't realize that's what you were doing. Black chess piece late. That's what I said. And I got nothing. I was like, thanks a <laughs> I thought you meant because I was just bad at reading her signals. That's why I went into the whole thing about, like, most yeah. times I didn't even realize we were playing a game. Yeah. That's what I feel like when we're on here sometimes. Dude, it's you go in the sometimes. shower with her, doofus. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. You go in the shower with her. He was not. She probably I'm locked Anthony the door behind Quinn. her, dude. Yeah, she locked that door. Shower with her. Oh, man. Is she taller than you? We were the same height. Uh, you can't shower with her then, dude. Not when you're real tight no. and wet. No. They have to be shorter? You can't shower in the dark. And they got to be shorter to enjoy this. the shower because then you got to you gotta get the water over them. Mm. You're just cold. It's a delicate balance. Yeah, Bobby's horny and cold. She's defending herself with a loofah and warm. Ooh, what about this? A new reality show, right? Where uh, you seduce women of other religions, and then you get them in the shower to have sex, and then you slowly baptize them, and you go, gotcha. <laughs> well, it won't work for one. Shower. <laughs> like, no. Welcome to the not... world of Jesus. <laughs> Fool me once. <laughs> right, Pat? <laughs> Only once. You're saved. Not getting in that shower again. <laughs> I went there with you that time, Pat. Oh, man. I know, but that's all right. No one else did. It's fine. <laughs> I think Glessner is on a delay. I'm just waiting. I'm just listening. I'm just. He doesn't know how to play double Dutch with this. There's a lot going on. <laughs> Everybody's excited. A black Pat, chess piece type of night. How was your? How are your mics? <laughs> They're fine. I just I just want to work on new shit because now I got I burned all the old, so I want to try and get some new shit. So I had a couple of dumb ideas, but then I had to yell at a handicapped guy, and then there was somebody with sunglasses. I thought he was blind. He wasn't. But whatever. Oh, he was just wearing his sunglasses at night. Yeah, it was dark. Oh, so I can I can see right through. <laughs> but um, so Bobby, how how are you? How was your day? Yeah, my my day was interesting. Um, had uh, you know, had a Fun day, long day at Compound. I uh, got to talk to TBD, which was cool. Found out Donovan, Crip Daddy's coming to New York in May to record, so <laughs> that'll be exciting. Um, to yeah. record? To record, yeah. Oh, he's a comic? Yeah, 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 he is. Oh, I don't, he does I don't stand know up. Yeah, he's very funny, but there isn't well, a lot. He doesn't of... do stand up, but he does comedy. <laughs> Somebody... Somebody... There we go, I'm in the game. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Not only are you in the game, you're the only one who's gotten on base so far. You just broke the no hitter I've been pitching. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, he has a leg up on you, unlike Crypt Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> he announced it, and instantly somebody tweeted at me because he's doing going to do it at Stand Up New York. His album should be called Sit Down New York. <laughs> oh, for sure. But are you guys cool. doing it, Bobby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, and uh, and then last night I got to do the stand, which was really cool. I had a fun nice. set. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it last night. No, but you could tell them. Yeah, no, it was we talked about it a little bit too. I love that club. That club's awesome, man. That's a fucking great club. It really is. Anthony's done it. Uh, Last night, we're going to get you there, Pat. Listen, I stay true to my roots. The only club I work is the greatest club in all of the land, the Harrisburg Comedy Zone. (laughs) (laughs) I just spoke with them. Did you? Comedy Zones. I got, um, I messaged them. O'Donnell gave me. I thought he gave me the name of just the guy who runs the one. No, it's the whole thing. Cause I know, I know yeah. that now. Yeah. I that's... dropped names that he wouldn't know. And, <laughs> but he still was like, Hey, wonderful. I got back to me, but like, it was just like, and he, he just said, just please send me a headshot and bio, whatever. But then it was just like, Oh, I probably shouldn't have dropped these names that you don't fucking know since you live in Guam, but whatever. Well, it apparently what we've been told not to suck our own dicks here too much, but um, apparently what we're doing with the open mic and the shows that we do like in our showcases that we run sometimes are like the most successful of the comedy zones. Yeah. So you're doing it. They know who you are. It so they, yeah. He might know our names, but he knows if you're talking to the Harrisburg guys, he's probably like, okay, that probably doesn't do nothing. I mean, it's still not great. Cause you're repping, you're dropping my name and nobody knows it, but he knew Mike. <laughs> yeah. But it is Mike. But Which makes way more sense. Ready for some I, I inside have not Harrisburg done the jokes. new stand, but I had I did do the old stand a bunch. I was gonna say, yeah, you've been at the one that was under the restaurant, right? Right. That's real. That's the OG. Yeah, I did that one a couple times. Well, let's uh, just so everybody who's watching knows, Anthony runs shows in North Jersey for the most part. He ran one of my favorite showcase and invitation mics or booked mics that was uh late night with anthony quinn where he did it like a late night show and had gimmicks and stuff involved and made you pay attention at all times and kind of made it fun that's it was why... fun yeah we had a good time we had a good time we're gonna do it again may 13th uh we're doing another one at the reserve club that's perfect and that's why i kind yes. of brought you and glessner on because you guys are both good at coming up with ideas to get people to enjoy comedy But uh, I kind of had a situation that wasn't very funny this morning, and this could be our first POS story. So, Anthony, I know you're our new guest, and just for any new listeners, since we're getting tons of new fans thanks to our clips. I'm down, baby. Hit me with it. Is one of us will tell a story. Uh, We'll give you some choices of who the POS could be. I know we went through this before, but just to recap. And then you you could choose one of those, or you could choose your own, and we'll kind of throw it to somebody. So I'll tell you the story. I'll probably kick it to Pat first so he can give you an idea, and then we'll go from there. Um when I woke up this morning, went to get in my car, and saw that the two little glove compartments had been opened, and, like, clearly all the shit was dumped out, like, somebody went through it, and, uh, nothing doing. We have a couple cameras, the neighbors do, pointing that way, so we texted them to see, and, like, I don't know if we'll get pictures or not, but not the end of the world. I think it was, like, 20 bucks I have in case I run out of gas and don't have a credit card or something, you know? Not not the end of the world, and normally my door is locked, but like when we move cars occasionally, one of us will forget. But uh, now, we've put up a camera, and I've also taken it a step further, because I want to rig old school shot style, like the Midwest, or like the Old West. Like <laughs> if you open my passenger door, a shotgun with a bag being round hits you. <laughs> so who's the piece of shit in this story? Is it me for rigging a bag being round in response to losing 20 bucks? Is it the guy who took 20 bucks from my car is it me for telling this story without really a clear good guy or bad guy uh pat we'll kick it to you first and or a third uh, option <laughs> any other option yeah I, I, that was really all i had <laughs> it could also be uh my landlord for living in a neighborhood where people take things out of cars and not having cameras that cover the whole driveway pat go to you first well, obviously, Bobby, it's not you. You're a baller. I mean, you've got two glove compartments. That's living high. I mean, I know most people don't. I, I've never met anybody with two glove I don't even – one for each glove, I guess. Um, I, I don't know why, why that got me, but that got me so <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why you have two glove compartments. Okay. Um, is one inside the other one? One's like a little one where I think you're supposed to put like your l- license, registration, insurance, like just pretty much it's that size. It could fit like a couple of papers. And then the and other you one's keep like money a in which one? 
that one because it looks like an airbag. It's kind of hidden. Okay. You've ridden in my car. You didn't realize I had two. Right. I didn't go yeah, through your yeah, shit. Yeah. Um, well, we'll find out when we look at the cameras, won't we, Glessner? <laughs> <laughs> no. So it's not you. It's also not the guy who broke in. Listen, it's tough times. Is he broke? Did he break in or did he use it just open? It was open. So he did right. not break anything. He saw an open door. He didn't break or damage anything. Yeah, he took 20 bucks. If you're doing that, you probably need the 20 bucks. Is it your landlord? No, it's not. You know what it is? What kind of car is it? That's a Buick. Yeah. Oh, America. You have to be America hurting if you're trying to steal money from a Buick. Yeah. I mean, right? yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, no, that's the problem. Because it's a Buick, because it's American ingenuity, my grandfather, people who built this country have that, and foreign people still think people with Buicks have money. And that's what happened. <laughs> Your grandfather built this Afghanistan. country? That's who built it? Sorry, was that? Your grandpa built this country? Your grandfather built this country, that son of a bitch? Yeah, he did. He did it. Yeah. He, he, he yeah. told other people what to do. Was he in the Illuminati? <laughs> The Illuminati didn't build it. No? They just no. kind of control they were in it charge. all. Yeah, they took is, he a Roth, is, there, is he a Rothschild? <laughs> he's a Rothschild because he's Irish. They've got a real is temper. Is he a Rothschild? <laughs> Pat wants to be angry, but I'm hoping he liked the word play. <laughs> I'm not angry he, at all. Is he drinking <laughs> the Queen's whiskey? He's putting the awe in autism. That's what he's <laughs> But um, I believe it's the people that make Buicks because why would you put two glove compartments? You gave someone too many options. They had to rob you. Or let me just – I know we don't normally ask another follow-up, but I do have a question. Is it possible that the two com- glove compartments confused the robber so much that they only took 20 bucks? Because there's a lot of other shit in my car. You've seen it. Sometimes we do ask follow-up questions, but it's not usually the guy who presented the story who asked the follow-up <laughs> questions himself. I'm just All right, to... Columbo. The fuck right, was that? I should check if my recording <laughs> equipment got stolen. <laughs> fuck. Uh, we'll kick it to you next, Anthony. What do you got, buddy? Uh, I would say, um, yeah, it's the douche. Whoever stole the twenty bucks is the is the is the piece of shit, and um, he deserves to get shot with a beanbag gun. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I I'm like sorry. where you stand, obviously. Because where like... should he get shot? Uh, I don't really care where he gets shot. He doesn't have to get killed. That's but the beanbag round. That it won't I'll, kill. I'll, I'll do what Drago from Rocky Four says. If he dies, he dies. See, I would go beanbag to the beanbag. I think that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the fun and solid. the sweet irony of it. And also, when you open the door, it's right there at dick level. So, I was gonna say right in the cunt, but you guys, the wordplay was so much better. <laughs> By the way, the hardest level on Donkey Kong, dick level. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that leaves just you, Glessner. What do we got? Ooh, nice. Well, before I get into my actual answer, I, you were talking about two glove compartments. My Dodge Avenger had a had a glove compartment, and then it also had up top, you push the button, and it flipped out another compartment that had slots to put in cans of soda or whatever, and you could chill it. Dodge is actively encouraging me to drink and drive. <laughs> it was fucking insane. When I first saw that, I'm like, well, obviously I'm buying this car. Hey, was it a used car? It was. Yeah, it was a so 20. Do you think somebody built that? It wasn't Dodge that did it? I don't know, because it looked like it was just always part of the car. <laughs> That's awesome. They're like, passenger airbag, nay, we give you a six-pack cooler, and I appreciated that. <laughs> You yeah, know you the your car, You're gonna want to drink that off. They had their priorities right. Uh, Bobby, you're the piece of shit. Don't use a beanbag. Use a fucking dragon's breath, man. This aggression will not stand. They took twenty dollars from you. Put them in the fucking ground next time. Blow that oh, dick clean off. I like that. Put a real fucking yeah, bullet in there. Yeah. yeah. I like your style. Like the best way to like deal with a mild inconvenience is aggressive overcomplication. <laughs> I also like the idea of. You know how you get the shakes when you don't drink before you get home. But you also know how hot it gets in Chicago. <laughs> Presenting the Dodge, the Dodge DUI. Avenger. <laughs> You'll be avenging your first DUI with a second it, DUI. It's yeah. the precursor to the Avenger, because they're going to avenge the kids you kill when you slam your six-pack on the way home. Uh, I think the piece of shit's me. I got to be more careful. Yeah, Curse is nice, but it's not that nice. You know, you got to make sure things are locked at all times. And 
you know, that's what I got. You live in Yonkers? Probably shouldn't have said that because now more people are going to come look at my car. Yeah, you've thought, given the you make of in, the car. It's Bobby from I thought, Yonkers. I thought, you lived in I thought you lived in Pennsylvania, man. I, I do sometimes on the weekends, but now pretty much full time I'm up in Yonkers. So we should hang cool, out sometime, that's cool. Anthony. Yeah, we're probably pretty close. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, we can hang out sometime, man. You, me, and Tyler Both are the creator. Think you live in other states. Like, <laughs> we do. <laughs> uh, different state of mind, man. Hey. You got to open your third eye. <laughs> Looking yeah, at the triangles and count five two five two seven four nine. Seven seven seven, man. Get in, get in tune, man. <laughs> Lucifer, baby. You ever see two He's people selfish. refuse? Did to you say quit? seven seven <laughs> seven and Lucifer? Yeah. <laughs> you were off by one yeah, and every one. We're bad at math. <laughs> <laughs> he's six six six, but he's lucky as fuck, Pat. That's you're at the Beelzebub Casino. <laughs> seven seven seven. Where well, the dice are always hot. Seven seven seven. No, seven 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 is occultic too. Is this is, is is something too, dude? Look at listen. Up. All numerology is occultic when you think about it. Like math is clearly a tool of the devil. We don't need to learn how to count things. The Lord is counting for us. Three cherries. That's Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the man. horseshoe and a clover and bar, also Satan. I've always found it funny that people hear that number and they're like, Satan. It's, like, it's just three numbers. It's, yeah, it's, it's six, never six, shown up. Oh, people take that shit really seriously, man. Really I take seriously. that shit really seriously. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're all goofy religions. No, I'm not that goofy religious. It's just you never see a horror movie where they're like, ah, you know what? Let's just stay away from that room numbered 666. Yeah, it's a be, movie. Be a real short movie. Why take the chance? That's one of the most insane movies I've ever seen about a number. It was also a horror movie. was Pi. Life of Pi? No, just You're Pi. Like, God, I wanted it's that just, kid to be dead. That movie is insane. Really wanted that line to eat him. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think we're all rooting for that. We never get what we want, do we? That's what the problem with modern cinema. But if you try so some They build times, you up and you might find. Pat. Get what you need. Um, Hell yeah. All right, that's the POS show. Anthony, tell them what they want. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, what was that movie uh, and they shot a lot when they were in the elevator? It was like... Uh, Devil, I think. Yeah, it was was going there, right? that, was, that was all the numbers in the button. That was brutal. I, that's when the first little ones that really, really fell off where you were like, Village wasn't terrible. Okay, it, it's getting worse and worse. And then De- I went to the theater and saw Devil. I was so mad. And then some guy oh, yelled that, Yeah, that was in the, in the elevator. That was terrible. Yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> one guy in the theater stands up and goes, the Indian one is the director. <laughs> that was my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> like, but shut up. That was a surprise ending, fuckhead. <laughs> I just saw his latest one, the Knock on the Cabin. Oh, yeah. How's that one? Who's there? Hey, That motherfucker is printing money, man. He is. He what is. the Fuck, dude. He's always want to watch it to go. Is he? Can he capture the magic bag? That's why everybody wants to see it. He did like two decent movies, and like he's yeah. set for life, dude. Do you know what really pisses me off about M Night Shyamalan? So I'm glad because you specified. as we are indie, well, yeah, I don't want you to think Depth it was like perception. M Night Ramadan. That would, yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's a low budget director, <laughs> M Night Ramadan. <laughs> That is so terrible. Oh, but there's definitely a guy. He's a porn director, definitely. Oh, yeah. Ramadong. <laughs> this dick's got a twist. Um, Rama, the Rama twist is it's dong. not a backpack. It's a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... um. <laughs> sense. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of tax credits and stuff available when you make films in certain places, and they're usually available to independent filmmakers. M. Night, I think funds his own movies now and he eats up like all of the budget for the Pennsylvania tax credits when he films and it's like cool man uh, we made our last movie for $2,000 we could really use everything we get it's like, but now here's fuck face McGee making $10 million movies and getting all of the credits for it it's like, appreciate it asshole I hope, yeah. he hope you've been dead the whole time I hope he Whoa. sees this clip Ooh. I hope he sees this like, clip and he pulls you aside and goes, okay, Andrew, you want to fund your movie? Do what I did. Pick glass out of garbage for six years and then shoot it on a $4,000 budget. <laughs> <laughs> your friend gets lucky and somehow knows all the answers to who wants to be a millionaire. And now you're a director in Hollywood. You got to work for it. 
Was that his origin? I don't know. Was his buddy that Carpenter guy who won the million dollars? I have no idea. I don't know. It's, <laughs> I really... Plot twist. Oh, wow. Holy <laughs> fucking shit. I'm stupid. All of that just... Because I live in a world where racism doesn't exist, Robert. <laughs> Plot twist. I don't know anything about M. Night Shyamalan, so... I mean... <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I do know the M stands Here's your twist. <laughs> <laughs> Stands for what? What did you say in here? Mini Mart. Mini Mart. <laughs> I see dead. Know. I see dead Pennsylvania people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but now um, they're alive. It's just Kensington. He needed the money, Andrew, so he could afford Dave Bautista as the lead in a movie. Which, by the way, he didn't do bad. Did. I was actually very shocked at how well he did. But they needed money for him and the redheaded guy from fucking Harry Potter. That was their main deaths. Ron Weasley. Yeah, we're on nice. old Ron Weasley doing a Boston accent in this movie. It wasn't terrible, but it's your typical, I'm not, not going to spoil anything, but it's your typical M. Night Shyamalan movies used to be you were waiting for the twist. Now M. Night Shyamalan movies are, I wonder if the twist is there is no twist. You know what I mean? That's what he started doing for a while. He made you sure. think there. So now he knows that you're waiting for a twist that may not happen and continues to foreshadow a thing that may not work with a red herring non-stop to the point where it's like, okay, this could have ended 20 minutes ago. Although, is there a better red herring than casting a red head in the co-lead? <laughs> a red herring. <laughs> this is Rupert Grintz, my red herring. <laughs> he stares at the camera. <laughs> Swinks. But they made it diverse, though, because it was a gay couple with an Asian baby. I think wait, I want him wait. to do my autobiography. Was it Batista and Ron Weasley were <laughs> the gay couple? No. Because that, they were the bad I guys. will watch several hours of that. Yeah, they, were, they were the bad guys. Oh, okay. It, were they the bad guys because they were the gay couple? No, the gay couple was the good guys, but they had their own issues. Turns out the plot part. twist is M. Night Shyamalan's homophobe. <laughs> <laughs> he's in this one for a second, too. He's on the, he's on the TV. Andrew, I'm surprised in you being the director and film guy you are that you didn't know M. Night Shyamalan's full name. Oh, yeah, I still... I've... Mini, oh, Mart, I mean, Mini Mart <laughs> Night Shyamalan. Mini Shyamalan. I think the dude's got, like, a good agent or something. I don't know. He's 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 smart, you know? Smart. <laughs> he's good at math. I don't know how talented engineer. he is, but he's yeah. very smart. You're right. He, he gets people to still care 20-something years later. <laughs> Even when you know it's going to be garbage and you're mad, you still treat him in your mind like a Tarantino sometimes. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah but he's, it's, it's going to be good. Like, it's, it's not. It's not going to be good. Why do we keep going? <laughs> I'd rather there watch could be treat. dead people, man. <laughs> there could be dead That's people again. You can only watch once because once you know he's dead, you're oh, like, yeah. Oh, Although, yeah. watch, if you watch it a second time, it does <laughs> get really interesting. She's like, whoa, that's Donnie Wahlberg. That's <laughs> Donnie Wahlberg? <laughs> He's the crackhead in the beginning. <laughs> he is at the beginning, yeah. Oh, let's be real. He's the crackhead in the beginning, middle, and end. Imagine yes. if he just started dancing in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if bum, instead, bum, of kill, instead of killing him, if he put a noose around his neck and sang Hanging Tough, that would have been awesome. <laughs> if he, He's singing if he right stuff. Some lame new kids on the block dance, like yeah. some really bad one, man. He starts doing coke. Just one of those side steps. Yeah, he starts doing coke, singing right stuff to that song, and then goes, "Oh fuck, it was the wrong stuff." And spent all and dies. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Bobby, he sings M Night stuff. That's what he sings. Oh fuck, M Night stuff is the song. And then it, it the light hits it differently, and you thought it was Donnie Wahlberg, but that's his one cameo in the movie. That's where M Night's there, and he just smiles. Does it turns out Indian actually dance. Ricky Martin was he in New Kids? No. No, he was in Menudo. Menudo How dare you? Which I actually think is what M's <laughs> name is. Menudo, Menudo Night Shovel. Menudo was fucking huge, man. I was yeah. around Menudo. They no, they were just little boys. <laughs> when I was a little kid, Menudo was huge, yep. man. Nah, they huge. were only here for like a minute. They Ricky was just the most famous piece, but there was, uh, that we know of. But there was guys who were bigger. They ran through it. They just kept putting new ones in. One got too old. That was like MTV came in. age. That was when everybody, you know, that was that was in the prime of everything. Oh, wait. Like they the Andrew wk it? Like, where they just replaced whoever got old and didn't acknowledge it? 
They acknowledge it. Oh, okay. They would okay. actually do a whole thing where you would find out on, on Tiger Beat the new, well, El Tigro Beat. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> El Tigre. Whoa. But, yeah. No, they were huge, man. Yep. They were big. They were big. At a time when everybody big was dumb, like Debbie Gibson and Tiffany and Menudo. The world was dumb. The 80s were the dumbest times of all time. My but they seemed was- pretty fucking happy on account of communism. I think, <laughs> I think, honestly, Glessner, they were gay, and I don't mean they happy by that. I think that's what you're confusing with happiness. They were pinkos. <laughs> well, at least 20% of them, because like Ricky Martin came out, and he's like, no, I've been living La Vida Coca for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and La Vida Caca, too. <laughs> Coca Caca. So I was... came out, and everyone's like, what? That guy's gay? Come on. Ricky <laughs> Martin? <laughs> <laughs> Cock Hudson Who else is gay Who's next George Michael You know what they said You know how they said You know how they said Rock Hudson got AIDS originally You know how they said right? Easy <laughs> Turns out it wasn't that easy <laughs> You fuck From a tear From from a tear From an actress That's what they said Gay tears Or no, lady not gay tears. tears They said he just Contracted it from uh, Like uh Tears on set, but she had AIDS in her tears. Yeah, that's what she she said. cries that was, AIDS. That's that, that was the or- tattoos. Mean? That was the original excuse. That was it. Because he was Rock Hudson, man. Well, no, I understand, but that Rock the- Hudson was <laughs> huge, dude. That was like if he said he was gay, they may have hunted him down, man. You got a couple thousand people out here want to talk to you, Rock. <laughs> That's the era we're dealing with, man. No, not a doubt, but I th- I've heard of crocodile tears, but not, <laughs> not aids of file tears. Like, that's a tough I'm thing. Serious, man. Dude, <laughs> that shit was a fucking. That was a cover up, man. Rock Hudson? He yep. was a heartthrob, dude. Yeah. Remember him and John Wayne were not supposed to be gay? <laughs> <laughs> what they're gay I hope that super John straight heterosexual a... Anderson Cooper can explain all this to me <laughs> John Wayne was such a talentless piece of shit man I can't stand John what? Wayne I'm sorry what he played sorry. Genghis Khan <laughs> <laughs> what the is this man <laughs> I can't stand hey can Pilgrim die. I'm Johnny <laughs> hey how are you how you doing hey Genghis Khan hey I'm uh, John uh, Wayne <laughs> I do mess. a Howard Cosell kind of, but <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, Howard Cosell. How, they're the same fucking person. Howard Cosell is the Jewish John Wayne. <laughs> Howard Cosell made the greatest call in the history of football, Monday Night Football, when this one guy was running black guy. He goes, "Look at that little monkey run on oh that." Yeah, he goes, "Oh look, he's gonna like a little monkey." Yeah, yeah. But he, oh, it dude, was yeah. it wasn't. <laughs> Malicious. Though. No, I when you Google Howard. it, it's wild. In fairness, he I was running Howard with Cosell. all four limbs, so Howard that's what he meant. Shut the fuck up. I loved Howard Cosell. Howard Cosell was fucking great, man. <laughs> Howard Cosell was one of the best ever, man. So that guy, the way he articulated things, the way he spoke, fucking amazing. Real he quick. did have a touch of sling blade going, but like <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of that slack jaw. But it did let me tell you nothing. right now, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I like taters. <laughs> no, no, dude, he was a he was a lawyer. He was a fucking good one because he ended up being Monday Night Football. <laughs> he was like he was like a tax lawyer or something. Or real yeah, but that's back if you were white, you could just be stuff. He's like, that's I'm bullshit. He was Jewish. She wasn't. Ronald white. Reagan Jewish. was with a monkey. Then he was president. <laughs> that's not a thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I, I disagree about Howard Cosell. I think he didn't get a fair shake. I love Howard Cosell. Oh, I'm just speaking of people who didn't get a fair shake. Speaking of people who didn't get a fair shake. Real quick, enough about Howard Cosell. Right now on Twitter. I'm Harry Chapin. I'm turning. No, off no, 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 no. This is a good. Right now on Twitter, three names are trending: CM Punk, yeah, Mike Pence, and Kurt Cobain. Pat. I don't normally do hacky things on here, but we're going to do a hacky bit. Anthony Quinn, fuck, Mary kill. CM Punk, Mike Pence, Kurt Cobain. What do you mean? You got to fuck one, you got to marry one, you got to kill one. You've never oh. played this game? I'm sorry, I apologize. So, the, yeah, okay. you got to fuck one, marry one, Well, I was one. confused that you said my name, then said Anthony, so we didn't know who was answering. Oh, I was sending it to Anthony. I was saying, Pat, I apologize. Okay, so one normally more time, go through it, who? The three choices. Mike Pence. CM Kurt Punk. Cobain. CM Punk. 
Who's uh, CM Punk? He's a wrestler. And MMA fighter. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> was he? <laughs> no, he didn't do much um, fighting back. I would just fuck Cosby them all. Cosby victims That's fought it. back more. <laughs> <laughs> very fair. Very Hollywood answer. What a loving man, out. Anthony. Bless I would man. just fuck them all. And hope that they let me live. There we go. There Don't go. let them cry on you. You'll get AIDS. That's what happens. <laughs> normally, I get the uh, normally I get the not wanting to kill one. But Pat, do you want to do the easy out here and explain what the simple answer is? He seems to be all over this. Well, I mean, you're gonna marry someone who's dead. Yeah. That way you don't have to deal with them. Oh, so, okay. Like, All right. <laughs> you know, you no, no headache. It's a, the marriage won't be hard. They're just dead. <laughs> um, kill. <laughs> I can't kill Cobain. He's already dead. Um, I, as a wrestling fan, and I'm tired of him, I would kill CM Punk because he's just fucked over wrestling fans forever. And, of course, I'd have sex with the one gay guy, Mike Pence. Great. Oh, yeah. What a power move. Because you know Mother's going to be in the room. I Mother will be answer. watching. <laughs> Mike Pence is a politician, right? Yeah, he, he, was... he was vice president with Trump. He... Is, is, is he gay, though? No, but he's very homophobic. And, and oh, okay. About it. Everyone believes that he is. That's it. Yeah, I remember he point... his wife, Mother. He supported yes. the, like, shock therapy conversion camps. Like, he's that level of homophobic. Yeah, because that's oh, really? why he's oh, yeah, no yeah, longer yeah. gay. Right. Yeah, he's... Yeah, he got cured. He's proof that it works. Uh, hey, he's trying to help them queers. Yeah, <laughs> someone's got to. Exactly. They're out there queer tearing everybody. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck, man? Be a man. Oh, that's a great answer. Andrew, Pat. What's CM Punk's real name? In the hackiest thing ever. What do you want to do? Oh, Phil Brooks. Um. Okay, Phil. Phil, we're gonna do something new. We're gonna lower you in from the rafters, buddy. It's gonna go great. There's no way it's not gonna. Go well. Put Phil, this blue blazer Phil, on really quick. Yeah, Phil. This is called a Bowflex machine. You're gonna learn. You're gonna learn this to use this later. That's different. <laughs> Glessner, Andrew, this has been the hack thing, so we can move on. Well, Glessner, see, you, you took my answer. That's what I was gonna. Um, so let's mix it up. No, 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 no. We've got we got a new question for you, Glessner. Okay. I want you to take it a step further. I want you to right. pretend these three were all in the same news story, okay. and write the story that got their names trending. Oh boy. <laughs> Quinn, if you want to crack it, this will come to you next. Oh, that's a tough one. Oh, um, you're good. Do what you got to do, buddy. Go go do your thing. You're fine. I'm just going to use bathroom. I would say Kurt Cobain killed himself after sitting down to a conversation with both Mike Pence and CM Punk. <laughs> I was going to go with Mike. He said all apologies. <laughs> Mike Pence announces his candidacy for presidents and now leading all polls while sacrificing CM Punk to bring back Kurt Cobain. Yo, I think we'd all be on board with that. I don't right? think anybody Nobody, would be upset about they'd that. They'd be like, yeah, but he did the pray away. But he brought back Cobain. One, but it's not as funny. <laughs> Take it, Pat. All right, so CM Punk is known for his main uh, theme song is Living Colors, Cult of Personality, right? Yes. Ian yeah, Punk in, in wrestling right now is not in wrestling right now. He had a big fallout about a year ago with AEW. He'd already run away from WWE. No one's touching because he's just like a cancer in the locker rooms. But there's rumors. That's why he's trending right now is that tonight there was rumors that they're hinting that he may come back when they go to Wembley Stadium with FTR. So therefore, he's because if he's going to make this comeback and he's going to come back and piss people off as it is, there's no way you could piss people off more than – dropping your old song, coming out to a Nirvana song, and your manager being Mike fucking Pence would be the greatest oh, comeback shit. of all time. I actually love that. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Quinn, do you have and the one? Nirvana song it comes out to is Raped Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah of course. Just that line. And it's just <laughs> Mike Pence run it, standing run it by, by me it. again. Run it by me again. So basically, CM Punk, those three same people, the wrestler, the vice former yes. vice president, and... Uh, uh, Kurt Cobain trending. I want you to write a news story that involves all three and is trending. So far, we've had Glessner. What was yours? Quick summary. Oh shit! Uh, Kurt Cobain killed himself after sitting down in a conversation with CM Punk and Mike Pence. Mine. Pence announces his presidency, sacrificing uh, Punk to bring back Kurt Cobain, leading all things. Pat was it wrestling. Pat, CM Punk, Punk makes yeah, a you heard it. Yeah. With Mike Pence as his manager, and his theme song is now "Rape Me" by Nirvana. Yeah, Anthony, what All do you right, got, wow. buddy? Hmm. 
Hmm. Wow. Holy mackerel. This is <laughs> having a good time. I'm, I'm Anthony. Did I say I'm Anthony Quinn? Did I say yeah, that of course. Already? You've said that a couple times, but it's all good. I say my name a lot. I, I do. Um, I think um, Kurt Cobain finally turned Pence gay. Took Ooh. him a while. Turned him gay. CM Punk filmed it. And CM Punk was a fan and got an autograph from both of them. There we go. I like that. Autograph. That's nice he got an autograph. <laughs> That's nice. Because <laughs> he's not really known to do that anymore. That it was nice? actually because they both had sex, it was a pornograph. There we go. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, wait, it's so much easier. We can just turn it to CM Punk is the C stands for Kurt. The MP is for Mike Pence. C U M Punk. Together there's CM Punk. They merge into one Voltron guy. <laughs> oh, I thought the M stood for Mini Mart. It does. It does. Oh, from, from a from a sports entertainment to a clearly scripted sport, did you guys hear the big story about Joel MB today? Well, I watched oh, the last oh. night. What happened today? No, okay, so uh, you all are familiar with Joel Embiid, seven foot tall yes, from yes, Africa. Yes, yes, an amazing year. Huh? Absolutely. Well, he's fucking great. He's the right. man. He's very funny. Likes to troll people on Twitter. I enjoy that. Very smart. Very, very. Uh... In anyway, go ahead. In the wake of the uh, women's final, where there's been a bit of a uh, race controversy that there really isn't anything, but people are trying to turn it into one. Who would have thought the person to bring unity would be Joel Embiid? Because a story came out. Where somebody asked him how he learned to shoot so well, because typically centers aren't good at shooting. They don't have great form. It's kind of awkward being that tall. Pat, you're a tall guy, not quite seven foot, but you know what I'm saying. Kind of. The, the NBA has changed the last couple of years. They all, all the tall guys shoot well now. But go ahead. So <laughs> this news article clipping I've got here is born in Cameroon, Embiid came to America, and this is from PBS News. This is 100 percent true. Embiid came to America as a 16 year old. He had the size, but no basketball skills. Somebody at the Players' Tribune asked him how he learned to play. He said, so I'm chilling one night, and I go to YouTube, and I'm thinking about to figure this shooting thing out. I go to the search bike box like, how to shoot three-pointers? Nah. How to shoot good form? Nah. I sit there for a minute and think about it, then the light bulb went off, man. I typed in the magic words, white people shooting three-pointers. Listen. I know it's a stereotype, but have you ever seen a normal 30-year-old white guy shoot a three-pointer? That elbow is tucked, man. The knees are <laughs> bent. The follow-through is perfect. Always. You know how in America there's always an older guy wearing, like, Everlast sweatshorts at the court? That guy is always a problem. His J <laughs> is always wet. I seriously got to the league by watching YouTube and how white people shoot threes and living in the gym. There's no other explanation for it. <laughs> How did funny. this bring back racial equality in women's basketball? No, no, I just think it's funny that, like, in in light of all people being like, "No, that that girl was being a villain," he's just like, "Yo, white people are great. They taught me how to shoot threes. You know that dude. That he talked a lot of shit before he even came in the NBA. And when he first came in, he got hurt, and he still talked a lot of shit. He drove you guys out of there. And then he, he came to. in and he backed it all up, man. I mean, he I think he, he got the scoring title one year. Yeah. He was like fucking that dude, that dude's a player, man. He might he might get MVP this year. I know they just keep going to Joey, but like, but he definitely is having a tremendous year again. And to be that big and and move that much, I mean, he's not gonna be able to play that long. I, I don't know, maybe I hope. But I mean, he's really, really last, big. Last night he put up fifty. He was on fire last night. But like, he's oh. really, he's like, seven. he was a great athlete in the camera room too. So what it was is like, he like seven three or something? That's yeah, what people say fun. about my penis. That he's that big and moves that much. It's not gonna play. Dude, long. that motherfucker is a player, dude. He, 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 I got respect for him, man. He and he talks shit too. He's grown up though. He's grown up a bit. He's grown. Yeah, up. He, well, and getting Ben Simmons. I know people don't want to hear a sports podcast, but getting Ben Simmons out there helped him a lot too. Letting, making sure that he was the man that's inside there, and uh, you know, having Harden be there and understanding I'm he's the go-to guy and Harden's number two. They're, so their team glad you brought up Ben Simmons because that actually brings me to the POS question. Because Ben Simmons, like you pointed out, is garbage. He wanted to be the number <laughs> one guy. He doesn't know how to shoot. 
but he was teammates with Joel Embiid, who knew the key was just simply searching on YouTube, learn how to shoot like a white guy, and didn't tell him. <laughs> so who's the piece of shit in the story, Pat? Is it Ben Simmons for not asking him how to learn? Is it Joel Embiid for t- not teaching him? It's Caitlin Clark for, uh, even though she's the best female basketball player there is right now in college, you couldn't remember her name one time. Me? And Caitlin Clark, she's up, the shit. You brought up the Cameroon, PBS, Ben Simmons, <laughs> but not the girl we're talking about. I would, say, I would have to say Ben Simmons is probably the piece of, everybody says the guy's a piece of shit. And he acts like a piece of shit. He sits out like a piece of shit. He, he And it's like, dude, you're this like, and, and then I found out he's he like this like spoiled Australian dude. It's like, come on, man. Yeah, well, there's no black guy named Ben since the rice guy. And to be honest with you, Pat, I just don't remember the LSU girl's name. That's why I didn't want to say either. Glessner, who's the piece of shit other than me for remembering Caitlin's name, but not the other, even though I bought her jersey, so that's probably why. Go ahead. Wait, whose jersey did you buy? Uh, Caitlin Clark. The LSU girls? Oh, no, okay. No, the Caitlin Clark. She's the truth. The Bayou Bobby sweatshirt, though. Oh, that's... Uh, oh, uh, fuck. Yeah, you're welcome for that I one. I gotta go see if I can return a suit. You watch women's quick. basketball? I, I don't did. watch any basketball, I and did. frankly, I'm stunned that you guys are all talking about the fact that there's a tall black man who's good at it. That's blown my head. I assume <laughs> he was the piece of shit. Like you just you you figured the secret out apparently, and <laughs> share it with your friends. <laughs> See a cat. Oh shit! He hates black people. <laughs> I know. Like, well, no, black people quit, quit it. I am Not out. You. I mean, that's why Anthony left. Like, Don't bring him up again. <laughs> no, you guys didn't. You didn't watch the USC versus Iowa game in the quarterfinals. It's an instant classic. I did. I know you did, Pat. We talked about it. We're real sports fans. <laughs> I'm the yeah. I say, I'm, I'm the in, most. I'm in Connecticut, so like women's basketball is a giant thing. So when nothing else is on, I will watch it. Like, <laughs> In small oh, is there towns a, in Connecticut. Is there a That's place in got. Connecticut that does well at basketball? Like at their okay. university of? No, I, 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 <laughs> Gino Ariema is the John Wooden of lady yeah. basketball. <laughs> I don't know much, but I know you. Can... <laughs> yeah. Sometimes like... I'll watch like a, um, a, what, a Final Four game or a championship game. Yeah, no, um, I, I don't watch regular season. I meant no, like I'll do that. Season. Like I'll do that. I'll, I'll listen to the grunts. Like, oh, oh, like, you know, it's okay. It's a... Andrew's like oh. that was good grunts by the way you did good. Oh. Oh. I was like, is that, is that, is that Bobby Tim oh. oh. Wait, is that a young Diana Tarazi? Wait, no, that's Anthony Quinn. Like, that's good. <laughs> I like to watch the JUCO basketball games because those whoa, motherfuckers whoa. are fighting for whoa, the junior co- junior that. college. Let me spend some more. This is more. Shut up. Those motherfuckers are fighting for their future because <laughs> they're not getting it with a degree from that college. Glessner's like, I like basketball, but it just takes so much effort because they got to hit it with the stick so I know where the hoop is. <laughs> God damn it. That's who invented it. <laughs> Fred the Jew Naismith, whatever his name was. <laughs> it's Dr. James Naismith. It was more. How dare Once you? Once again, I've just tried to make jokes on a comedy podcast. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous! Serious business here. Jokes. I like. Fuck. Let's I talk like... more about Cameroon. <laughs> Winnie Truth. I... Cameroon's what I call a black guy who looks maroon. <laughs> no one's made it this far through the podcast. You We're think fine. Ralph Lauren knows that they make these? Come on, dude. <laughs> this is a three X. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> three X. That's pretty sexy. That's the perfect amount of X. That's right. That's a sexy size. Is that Satan? <laughs> your fucking mind. Uh, Pat, That's the devil. Three no, X's, right? no, Pat Satan's X I. No, he's uh V I V I V I. Bye bye bye. V I V I V I. It's a Roman. Three name. Virgin <laughs> Islands. I'm just. <laughs> Why don't they all just fuck each other? You know what I mean? There's three of them. And they're just the islands. It's crazy. <laughs> if they all fucked each other, they'd be Greek, not Roman, Pat. <laughs> what are they gay? Are they gay? Are they gay? <laughs> right, Bobby, are we done? <laughs> I did my two stories. Anthony? Yeah, I think we did it. You got a story for us, buddy? No. On that note, all right. What, where do you got a plug, <laughs> big guy? <laughs> Other than, Anthony, you've got the Quinspiracy podcast. 
I was a guest Ooh, once. I like we had I, a lot I, of fun. I, like I have a podcast called Food Addict too. <laughs> and um, um, they're both on everything. You just search Anthony Quinn podcast, all of them will pop up. Anthony Quinn Food Addict, Quinn Spiracy, either one, they'll pop up, and you can hear my little round voice talk about little round topics. Um, on conspiracy, too- do you do like real conspiracy or just kind of like just type it or whatever? I, I, I'm interviewing comics. It's what they know, you know. Oh, cool. Okay. I'm I like, not, like drop in science. I know quite a bit about it, but I really don't believe much about it. Um, nice. like you know, yeah, I mean, we joke. This like a, the the beginning I ask, and then the second part I just ask like goofy questions about Bigfoot and aliens and shit. Like oh, that. that's fun. I'll definitely check that out. Man. That's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll have you on, man. I'll have you on. Yeah, I like. I, I like. Know you were so tall though. I'm not big on tall. People. I don't. Bobby's no. a midget. I'm, <laughs> I'm five, five six. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. When he said that, like, what just are we so doing? you know, I'm, man. Fuck it. Some tall people I know are pains in my asses, dude. I don't know if I got room for another tall person. Oh, you. <laughs> Definitely you check out. The Don Anthony Quinn on Instagram. The Don Anthony Quinn on Instagram. Definitely check out the Quinn Spiracy podcast. On our episode, we talked about how I think sunscreen is actually what's giving people melanoma. Lesnar, what do you have to pug? Uh, so you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. No, 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 no I Drew. said pug like oh, a dog. I'm sorry. Pug? Yeah, you have to bark it. Just do your fucking Sorry, no, just... This is fucking stupid. <laughs> that's pretty good, dude. I like that. You nailed that bark. I didn't think you were going to, but goddamn, that was a home run. I know my pugs, motherfucker. That's what I'm about. I got a uh, semi from that, dude. <laughs> all right, we got to get out of here because Quinn's got to go deal with his God awkward damn it. Yeah, uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Drew underscore Glessner underscore. Uh, if you like watching independent films, no one does, um, you can follow my movie channel at Thinking Art oh, Entertainment on YouTube where we make a lot of cool movies. So, Didn't you just win a big award? We won several big awards this weekend. Yeah, but your comments are the greatest, though. That's what matters. The comments underneath your movie. Oh, they're so good. They yeah. Won. I it's I love it when people start talking shit because I just talk shit right back. I'm like, you go right back. It's hilarious that you do? Answer, like wait, that's the guy. Yeah, nothing else going on. All people are like, oh, he was so good. I'm like, let's calm it the fuck down. He was okay at best. They're like, who are you talking about? <laughs> me. I'm talking about me. That's. <laughs> and, that's awesome. That's awesome. Pat, what do you got to plug, buddy? So I, go ahead, Bobby. You go ahead. Just check out the Dave Max Sports Program as always. Check out Quinspiracy. Check out Andrew Glessner. But most importantly. Please head on over to iTunes and download pre-order Stay Dry by Pat Oates. We're making a real push here. We're coming in the final two weeks of promotion. What is it, two weeks tomorrow? It'll be out, so order, order, order. Is that your special? Yeah, my uh, album. We just did, we just did audio. But that's How it. many minutes? 60. It's awesome, my third one. Man. It's my third one. So Congratulations, dude. Hey. I think that audio is the way to go, dude. I just don't like showing off my head. Um, but I, mean, <laughs> that's cool. I, mean, I always do cool. it that way. Awesome. Awesome. Get your shine on, brother. What are you talking about? But um, pretend you're uh, Mike yeah, Figs and that, bye, that's bye, bye, bye. Do that I stuff. Have. That's great. And then um, uh, April twenty seventh, I'm headlining Stress Factory in Bridgeport. There's some tickets remaining to that one. Um, a couple more dates coming up in May. Some other places I haven't been at yet. New, new ones there. Oh, um, next week I'll be on Real Ass Podcast. On Gas Digital, uh, eleven o'clock on Wednesday to promote oh, shit. everything. So that'll Hell be fun yeah. to be on there. And I, th- Bobby, I haven't heard back an email, but I think I'll be on morning as well. But um, I yeah, I will confirm that with you tomorrow. Cool. And then check me out next Monday on Chaz and AJ. I won't be on Monday and Wednesday because Wednesday I'll be over in New York. But like, but Monday I'll be back on Chaz and AJ. So check that out. Andrew, thank you so much. Always a pleasure, buddy. Anthony, great meeting you. Thank you so much, man. Cheers, That's- man. Cheers. Good luck, man. Keep hustling, dude. Things. Sounds like you're doing great, dude. I'm trying my best. You too. Peace, love, pot, and microdots, seven, seven, man. Seven, baby. And if you can't join him, beat him, and don't be a piece of shit. Or if you want to be one, be one. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Who are we to tell people not to be pieces of shit? You know what I mean? Like, if they want to be. Good point. It's the pot calling the kettle not a piece of shit. That's what we <laughs> And good <laughs>